I certainly look at how we've progressed just in my lifetime uh, and just been amazed at what humans can do in, in space and, and the exploration out there. I mean, literally the physical excitement that you can get doing something that is new and hasn't been done. How can we do this and share it with the world and open up opportunities for other people? When we were doing the, the cave expedition and we were going out into parts of the cave and literally mapping out the cave that had not been mapped before. I mean, every day you got woke up excited going, what are we gonna find today? And the, the beauty in the cave was just astounding. It was like another planet because it's nothing you had ever seen before. It was very much like being in space in that temperature was always the same, the humidity was always the same. You never knew what time it was um, because it was always dark. So you had a lot of really good analogs to spaceflight. The Aquanaut opportunity and the Aquarius Habitat off the coast of Florida um, was another one. We were down underwater for a week where we're doing simulated spacewalks with hard hat diving. We're out there for you know four or five hours and working with a simulated mission control. We're doing time delay like we would if we were on Mars. And so working through those types of things was really a neat part of the mission. And so if we can send astronauts to do training like that, then they've done this extreme environment, that extreme environment. So when they get to space, it's not the first time and they're overwhelmed. It's just another extreme environment that they're able to participate in and to just train, to expect extreme and just cope with it when it happens. I'm Randy Bresnik, and I'm fortunate enough to be one of your astronauts. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Amelia Earhart. No, I'm not in her direct lineage. Turns out my grandfather was her photographer for five years before her world record attempt in 1937. And he was supposed to accompany her on the flight, but uh, at the end, she ended up taking extra fuel instead of him and his equipment. So that simple decision in 1937, because my father was born in 1938, meant that had he gone on that flight, that I wouldn't be here today. My wife, Rebecca, and I had two children within 11 months. What you don't know is that they're actually four years difference in age. Um, as my wife likes to say, one was uh, hand-picked and one was homegrown. We got to experience the wonderful miracle of adoption of our son Wyatt from Ukraine, and then the miracle of pregnancy and the birth of our daughter Abigail 11 months later. Uh, we are a very, very blessed family. I love to fly, and that's, that's not a secret. I'm kind of like the kid who went to the air show and says, Daddy, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a pilot. His dad looks at his son and says, I'm sorry, son, you can't do both. Grow up and be a pilot. So that, that's kind of me. I've been very fortunate over my uh, uh, fighter pilot, test pilot, and uh, astronaut career to have had the opportunity to be able to fly uh, 82 types of flying machines so far. Everything from jets to props to helos to gliders to tail draggers to float planes, um, yes, and, and spaceships. But what you uh, didn't know is that I've even had the rare opportunity to fly the Goodyear blimp. I still have my first car. Uh, after my uh, freshman year at the Citadel uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, I came back to Southern California and purchased a 1966 Ford Mustang, which uh, I've restored over the years. It's been a, a labor of love, and I would drive that uh, cross country uh, with my grandfather back to college for uh, the remaining years of, of school. Uh, she's got a quarter million miles on her now and still runs like a top. And just last month in June, we celebrated uh, our 31st anniversary. Beneath the crusty exterior of this old Marine Colonel, lies uh, the heart of a hopeless romantic when it comes to my wife. She's the most uh, amazing woman on or off the planet. And to show my love for her, I suggested that we have a, our wedding in a uh, Scottish castle, and so we did. And in good Marine Corps fashion, we decided to have a piper at the uh, wedding ceremonies. And then we wisely decided that uh, you know, the piper was the only one that had the legs to, to wear a kilt at the wedding. 